Welcome back YouTube subscribers. Forward Progress USA, 4 Pro. Well, I say YouTube subscribers, but if you haven't subscribed, you haven't liked, I hope you give it an opportunity. You watch this video, you check it out. Get rid of all that. Holsters. Everybody always asks me, why do you carry a Diamondback in an inside the waistband holster? Uh, if you have one with a clip, or why do you carry one with a clip without a waistband holster? Why do you carry a full size 1911 on your hip? Why do you carry or have drop leg holsters when you train? Why this? Why that? There's always 50 million questions, both in my private life and in my professional life. That being said, now even my social media life, that being said, holsters are probably going to be a thorn in your side for the rest of the time that you have firearms. Let me explain something to you. Um, 10 or 15 years ago, I got really into firearms, okay? Just like you, or maybe you're getting down that road or haven't gone down that road yet, let me explain how this happens. You buy a firearm, okay? You ask if it comes with a holster or you get too excited, you don't buy a holster with it. You buy another holster. You buy another firearm. You find out that holster doesn't fit that firearm. Then you buy another holster. You buy another firearm. Guess what? Well, you kind of like that holster, but your body shape changed a little bit. You stopped getting gains in the gym. Whatever happened to you, uh, you got a new vehicle because it's happened to me. I used to drive a 2002 Trans Am W6, and if I had anything on my hip whatsoever, wasn't happening. Going to kill the bolster in that seat. Going to kill my side from sitting in it. I drive a truck now. Um, depending on who you ask, some people say it's an SUV, but it's a truck. Okay, it's a truck. Drive a truck now. Reality is. Even with that, sometimes having something on my hip it doesn't like, so I end up taking my gun off, which to me is a little bit of an issue. I don't like having to take a firearm off and on, off and on. It just depends on the situation. But that being said, let's, let's pretend you're somebody that hasn't ever really dived into the holster market before. I'm going to show you just basically a bunch of stuff I have. I have a ton of holsters. Stuff I've accumulated, the high points to it, the low points to it, why it's important. Let's go. First and foremost. Some guys will tell you that having a drop leg rig for something is kind of foolish. Other guys swear by it. Drop leg rigs, two reasons. One, easier to get in and out of vehicles with them on. Much, 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 much easier. Especially if it's a vehicle like a patrol car, something you got a bunch of stuff over here, you got a big console over here. Probably not as easy. Some people say it's harder to draw from the vehicle with it. Some people say it's easier to draw from the vehicle with it. Me personally, I find it very easy to draw from a drop leg rig when I'm in a vehicle. That being said, I use only Blade Tech drop leg rigs, and I use, for the most part, the majority of my holsters are Blade Tech and or Red River Tactical holsters. Reason being, check this out. You guys want to have a holster. I know Safariland does their ALS, but this is the TMMS by Blade Tech. What you do is you pop off this little piece on the side here, okay? And now this entire drop leg rig, I can pull apart. Take this off, and now this holster... I have a paddle set up for it, which we got one right here. I've got a paddle set up for it. I've got a bunch of different setups for it. So this holster is now five different holsters. It's a Molly plate carrier rig. It's a side, a side rig with just a plain old holster, okay, with a belt loop. It's a drop leg rig. It's a paddle rig. It's a quick clip, you know, the, um, the belt clips that Blade Tech is popular for. I can put that TMMS system, it's just the host. This is the host for it, okay? It comes in two pieces. I put that system on anything that accepts a Blade Tech screw pattern. And now this holster, instead of being just one static holster that you can do one thing with, like this universal uh, paddle holster, now this holster can be five different things. But that being said, so now I've covered the belt clip. Or excuse me, I've covered the uh, Blade Tech clip system, which we're going to talk about a bunch here. And I've covered some of the basics on why you would have a drop leg. What's another reason for a drop leg? One, space on your belt. Space on your belt is critical. Two, if you've ever worn a plate carrier or a vest, having a, a holster that's riding high up on your hip is not a fun time. It's not a good day at the office, okay? It's very difficult. That's an example of one of my, belt, uh, excuse me, my thigh rigs. Again, Blade Tech, I also run some of their proprietary systems that you can use the TMMS on this setup, okay? But what I do with this is I've got my AR mags and my Glock mags. These are mostly range and like kind of training stuff. I don't ever walk around in public with this stuff on. 
okay? Even professionally, I don't wear drop leg rigs. But it's one of those things that I like training with different platforms. I like having different options. I like kind of increasing my psyche as far as that goes. Uh, you know, there are times where basketball players will learn how to be a post player. They're five foot eight. They're not going to be a post player. But it makes them a smarter basketball player, okay? That being said, I like these systems because they're adjustable. This Blade Tech thigh rig is one of those things where you see all these different holes on it. It's very modular. You can do a lot of different things. I can put another holster on here. I can change that setup. But I like to have my ammo on a drop leg rig too because, well, shoot, anything I can do to keep this from being uncomfortable is fine. If you've got to roll around with somebody on the ground, if you've got to fight somebody, if you've got to wrestle somebody, I promise you, having things on your leg, you'd still be able to move your legs around. You're still flexible. You're still a little bit more, more dynamic. Having things on your belt sucks. I know people really don't understand that. Put a belt on with a bunch of stuff on it that's plastic, hard, rigid, and doesn't move around. Not really fun. Uh, let's keep going. We'll give you an example of another drop leg rig. This is a Farland setup. Okay, it's kind of modular. Okay, price point on this one probably about one hundred thirty dollars. Price point on a blade takes a little bit cheaper than that. You've got two screws here, so you can put holsters that are Safari Land that have that two screw pattern like I've done here. And you've got two screws here, and then you've got your main your main setup here for your actual holster. Same thing. Okay. Do people sometimes drill these and make their own things work? Yes, but I don't really like butchering holsters. I like that rigidity. I like that stability to the platform. Okay. What is this for? This is for a 1911 with a light. So now we're going to dive even deeper into the whole, why do you have so many holsters? Why do you have so many different holsters? Most of my 1911s that I get, I like to have a light. Okay. Most of my firearms, period, that I get, I like to have a light. This one, as you see, has a Surefire X300. It's taken me years and years and years to deal with people and to figure things out because a lot of people don't put really good information out there or at least not geared toward the stuff I've usually had questions on. I've always had to kind of figure it out on my own. That being said, I've come to the realization that for the most part, if a holster will hold a stream like TLR1 or TLR1S or TLR1HL, it will hold a Surefire X300. If it will hold an Insight M6, like the most of these, I believe this was actually, or excuse me, this was actually made for a Glock with a Insight M6, okay, which is a big, big, big laser, laser light, excuse me. If it has the Insight M6 on here, on one of these Safari lights, it will hold the light or a firearm with an X300 light. So you can basically cover all bases. But I have seen where one's made for an X300 by this company or by another company. And it doesn't really fit right. It, it kind of goes in, kind of doesn't. And I don't personally like that. I like that to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more leisurely. But do have good retention on these. This is a retention holster, so it's something that if you're running, your firearm doesn't pull out of here. So if I were to take this holster that I have from Red River Tactical, which I will talk about them by the way, but if I were to take this holster again, a 1911 standard size with the rail with the Surefire F300. And I pop that on there, now I have retention on here, it can't come out. I just pop that hood down, pull it out, and now it's there, okay? So that's a Safari Land. That's one of their 6004 series, I believe, okay? That being said, look at that, put the uh, 1911 in the Glock holster. That's kind of funny. Didn't fit, wonder why. Guess I had to buy another holster. One more example of a Safari Land, this is for a Glock. This has a different retention style, okay? This is a double retention. Instead of just having that hood that you depress with your thumb, this also has a side release, one of their ALS systems. Kind of cool. Here is a belt setup for it. Now you could take this belt setup and you can pop it onto that Safari Land. But unlike that cool TMMS system what we're talking about from Blade Tech, you'd have to take screws out. Okay, I Loctite my stuff. You have to take screws out, probably take you about 15, 20 minutes total time. Get your screws, get your tools, take this, take that, go to work. The difference between that and one of these, I could take this holster, which is for a Glock 19 with an XC1, okay? I could take this holster, which is for a Glock 17 or a Glock 19, one of the two, um, with a Surefire X300. And I can make that decision real quick and go, uh, I don't want to carry that today. Pop that one button off the side, pull this up, slide this one down, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So very cool setup. What I did is I called Blade Tech and I got a bunch of the actual panels. I want to say they're like 14 bucks for the large TMMS inner with hardware is what they call it. 
Okay, I got a bunch of those and I got a couple of the actual pieces that they lock into and I did that. Matter of fact, here's one on one of my belts that I use every day. So I take this guy, do that, slide it down in there. Okay, you hear it lock, really positive retention. I lock that screw over there, done, that's it. Oh, well, you know what? I made a mistake or, you know, my girlfriend yelled at me. She doesn't want me to carry that today. Okay, so I pop that retention, that little secure lever on the side. I don't know what they call it. Okay, and then I just pull up on this and I push out. Guess what? Holsters come apart. And these are solid setups, guys. There's nothing hokey about it. It's very, very hard material. I don't know if it's made of poly polymer or some sort of plastic composite, but it's very, very, very rigid. Never had any issues out of that. Okay. And then again, going back to the same, I like to use these Blade Tech carriers. I have them on this belt. But to give you an example, okay, this is for a Glock. I like, I like good retention, but I like something that I can take on and off my person. This is another Blade Tech product. This is their Quick Lock. That's what it's called, Quick Lock. Okay, that's how you secure the holster right there. All you do is push that guy down. You hear that snap. You get two snaps on the side here. So you get two points of contact that secure it. The only way this holster comes loose is if you push on these two tabs. Well, what Blade Tech did, which is very, very, very cool, is you push that piece up and you cannot depress those tabs at all. Okay, I know some of the Taser holsters are, are made of this. I know there are a lot of people that carry magazines like this on their duty belt. Very, very, very popular system. A ton of them out there. This system does not fail. Again, very rigid plastic. Moving forward. We've got a generic paddle here. This is made by KSP1911, or at least that's what it says on it. This is an Amazon, or excuse me, it's an Orpaz holster, KSP19-11. This is a generic thumb release retention for a 1911 with a rail. I bought this because it was about $29. It was cheap, it's something that's universal, so pretty much any 1911, three and a half inch, four inch, five inch, five and a half inch with a rail, at least that's what was advertised, will fit in this holster and you can still use it and have a quick, easy way to grab a 1911 that doesn't have a light, okay, that you don't have a main holster for. And I don't like the Blade Tech, or not the Blade Tech, who made those? The Black Hawk. The Black Hawk's where there's the button like this that has the retention, okay? In a, in a severe situation, in a time is life situation, in a fight for your life, I promise you, you People hear about it, people think about it, you'll see things that you, you were looking for, not that were there, you'll, you'll hear things that you were expecting to hear that maybe didn't happen, um, but the most important part is you will lose a lot of your fine motor skills, you will use a lot of your sensory skills, uh, you'll use them and you'll lose some of them, okay? That being said, people when they get scared, they, they always do two things, there's people that just close their eyes, there's people that close their eyes and turn their head like this, okay? When you go to grab something, you're going to dump all your adrenaline as you go to grab for it. Let's say you're going for a firearm, okay? And you go and grab for that firearm and you have one of those finger releases here, okay? What's the next move when you're just screaming that release because your brain's telling you, get your gun out, get your gun out, get your gun out. You're screaming on that release and the gun pulls out. Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna rake the trigger. I know some people say that's BS, been on a range, watched it happen, not a fan of them, never will be a fan of them, okay? People lose their mind if you don't clear a gun on a YouTube video. People lose their mind if you point a gun at somebody on a YouTube video at the camera or if you clear a gun and then point it somehow in the general direction of your hand at one point in time. But people will run around with a holster that you literally index your finger below the firearm's frame, push and pull at the same time to get a firearm out of there. I'm sorry, dumbest design ever. I will argue that till the day that I die. And I apologize uh, to, I think it's a Serpa is the name of the holster. I apologize to the company that makes those. I would rather carry my holster on my hip with duct tape than try and use one of those systems. I'm dead serious. I would never recommend that system. Anybody watching, if you have one of those systems, sorry if you love that. I personally have seen them fail. I'm not a fan of them. Moving on. Companies like T-Rex Arms, um, LAS, I can't remember what LAS is an acronym for. T-Rex Arms, I gotta give the nod to T-Rex Arms on some stuff because T-Rex Arms has that cool little, uh, you know, that logo and a T-Rex Arms is kinda cool, I think that's hilarious. Uh, Lucas Botkin, I think is how you say his name. Very, very great shooter, very, very good channel, has a ton of stuff, ton of time, makes really good holsters, makes really good products. 
Uh, would love to see an inside the waistband for one of my guns. Since I'm plugging the hell out of you, I'm going to talk to you soon, Lucas. Um, but absolutely great inside the waistband holsters. Very, very good design. 150% positive. Never had an issue with any of these holsters. Retention's phenomenal. But a little high. A little high, but you really do get what you pay for when you get T-Rex Arms holsters. I like the appendix carry. I like the inside the waistband. I never like to have anything past my hips. Honestly, I don't even really like to have it on my hips at uh, 180 and 180. Okay, or you know, there and there to help you guys out. 180 degree line straight. I don't like to have anything past that. Okay, uh, being in the fitness, being in the working out, being in the fighting, things like that. A lot of your larger muscle groups, if I had to kind of fight to get something, are here forward. You don't have a lot of strength and mobility in your shoulders when you're back here. Okay, if somebody were to grab you and you have a behind the back, small the back. Even though I had this awesome 1911 holster made actual snake skin, beautiful leather. I've trained out of it and I tell people all the time not to carry behind their back. You're using a lot of fine motor skills, whether you reach over this way, okay, and you're, you're indexing your hand this way or you're indexing your hand over when you reach back. Now you're talking about all somebody really has to do is get a hand on your arm or get a hand on your wrist and you are not gonna be able to overpower them. Yeah, I promise you, you're not. You can let your ego get in the way, but scientifically, metaphysically, Physiologically, it's not going to happen, okay? You'll tear a labrum, you'll tear a rotator cuff. Your shoulder's not in a very strong position, okay? Um, you know, there are guys that will say straight lines are strong, you know, angles are weak when they're talking about shooting. So why are we not going to acknowledge that when we're talking about grabbing the weapon, deploying the weapon, getting the weapon from your, your holster, okay? I'd rather have it right here where I've got big muscle groups, uh, chest, shoulders, front delts, okay? Biceps. I've got some of my back and some of my trapezius that I'm incorporating. I've got all these muscles here. That I can fight somebody off with. Worst case, I'm going for my gun and the guy comes for me. He can't really control my hands here. Everything's kind of stronger in that range. So I definitely prefer inside the waistband. I definitely prefer appendix carry. I don't like open carry. There is a time and a place for open carry. Okay. That being said, talk about open carry. Here's a paddle setup. Okay. With a Blade Tech TMMS inner and outer. Okay, and this is the Red River Tactical. This company, I forget where they're at, I believe it's Tennessee. They're a veteran owned company. I love it. I love their stuff. Really, really, really good holsters. I want to say they're in the $80 range for a fully custom holster to your gun. And I like to have the retention on there. It's just a push button. Is it something that gives you a lot of you know security? No. Is it something that if somebody doesn't know firearms, they may fight with that firearm? Absolutely. Does the Safari Land have a little bit better rigidity to it, or as far as that goes, a little bit better tension, retention? Retention, no. Um, security, in my opinion, yes. This, you just basically push it out of the way sideways, that way, toward your, toward your torso. But I like that if I take off running with this thing, it's not going anywhere. I like that, like a duty holster, my, my brain has to tell my thumb, hey, get the gun out, get the gun out, get to the get the holster, get to the holster. I love that, okay? That being said, your hammer does have to be up and in the locked position for you to be able to use that holster, okay? Um, obviously, your safety, you can manipulate your safety all you want in, in the firearm. Um, just full disclosure, I had this made for another firearm and most of my 1911s, actually all my 1911s with a light work on their setup with the Springfield operator. That being said, for this particular firearm, I did have to recess or cut a little bit away from the holster. And that was mainly because I was using an extended EGW uh, magazine release. So there are things that you may have to modify a little bit with your holsters. Your standard issue Dremel will get you guys taken care of. There are some generic, Blade Tech makes some, there are some generic ones that you can adjust the retention on and you can take, let's say, a Glock 19 magazine, throw it in there, got your retention, you're good to go, right? Okay, well then you turn around, okay, well what about this magazine for my 1911? Well, a 1911 double stack magazine, dude, look at that, we're good to go. So now instead of having 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 magazine carriers, 100 different holster setups, I like to run my things a little modular, okay? I like to use my, my uh, research, I like to use my big brain, and I like to kind of figure things out. I've got too many holsters here, but I'm really, really, really bringing that in closer, okay? I've got my basic stuff that I use for every day. This is kind of one of those situations 
where I would like to be streamlined and this is the only holster I have for my DB9 Gen 4. Okay, it works with the Gen 3. This one is from Black Rhino Concealment. Okay, this is a very, very cool little holster. That being said, this holster, carbon fiber, great retention, just slip it in my waistband. I'm hanging out, I'm doing my thing, I'm in my truck, boom done it's there I know it's there if I ever need to pull it out I'm good to go there's something to be said or excuse me there's something to be said blah, 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 about having a holster that's ready to go for you having a holster that it, it's like putting your socks on putting your shoes on you just grab it and go you grab it and go to me that's great the one thing I will tell you about is when your brain and your body get to that point where it's oh yeah it's just like putting socks on dry fire that gun Take the magazine out, take the rounds out of it, clear the gun, dry fire it, dry fire it. Every time you put a firearm on your belt, dry fire it 10 times. Every time you come in the house, dry fire it. Every time you leave the house before you leave, dry fire it. You have to train your brain, hey, there's a firearm on me. Hey, this is where it is. Putting it on doesn't train you for getting to the gun. Putting it on doesn't train you for what clothing you're wearing that day. I've gone to the range before and straight pulled my firearm out and forgot I was wearing an undershirt, okay, because I didn't do any training that day. I forgot that I was wearing two shirts that day, and dude, once I committed to it, I committed to it, I punched out, I started shooting, didn't care, okay, because I have trained for that. I have trained for, ooh, I did not fully clear my garment, we're going to give it a shot because I at least want to get one on target if I can, okay which that's more of a revolver style, but obviously some automatic a little more susceptible to that. That being said, train your body, guys. Train your mind. When you get a different holster, train with it. Draw from it. Practice from it. Draw from it. Practice from it. You'll never lose that, okay? You'll spend 85 minutes watching videos of me and videos of other people, but you won't actually train with your firearm. Invest in good holsters, okay? Blackhawk, um, or excuse me, not Blackhawk, Black Rhino Concealment, a lot of these companies, Crossbreed, um, Pintech, actually, I'll give you a perfect example. I did a review on the Diamondback DB9 and the AM2. That company went out of their way to talk to six different holster companies, okay, and I'll list them here. Went out of their way so that when you bought this firearm, okay, when you bought this Diamondback DB9 or you buy the Diamondback AM2, both great guns, by the way, check my reviews out of you. Both are great guns, but what really, really, really sold me on it, being just pushing me over the edge is that there's great holsters for them. Okay, I've got a, I've got a couple firearms that I've got a Chris Costa carry comp by STI, and no one makes a holster for them. There's one company and they're on uh, Gun Broker, I think it is, and they, they're like two hundred something dollars for a leather holster that's uh, inside the waistband. No thanks. Um, it's just one of those things that. So I, I spent four grand on a gun, thirty eight hundred dollars on a gun, and oh by the way. Uh, you, you really can't carry it. it it's going to be a range toy. Piss on that, I want to shoot it. Probably going to try and send it to Red River Tactical. Probably going to try and send it to Red River Tactical because nobody makes a holster for it. Going a little bit further, guys. You've got other options. Some of you guys talk about RMRs on, on pistols. There are options that Blade Tech has and other companies have where there's an actual RMR cut so that when you do have an RMR on your firearm, um, you can go ahead and pop that in the holster and it does clear the RMR. So something else that you guys might not be aware of. There are companies like this Safari Land here, which this is for a Glock 34 with an RMR. This is actually a pretty cool little holster. This has both your, your attentions we were talking about. It's got your thumb retention here and it's got your other thumb retention, okay, which stops the firearm from coming out. But you've got your standard hood and you've got this hood for an RMR. So this actually locks in the RMR and covers the RMR up. The reason I like that is because a lot of the armor holsters are exposed. So, and on duty, if I'm running around or however you're using your firearm, even if you're using it for, um, you know, training and, 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 you know, just shooting competition, you've got another added protection from the elements here, okay? Rain, water, sleet, dirt, anything that you're running into uh, that can get on that armor and, and maybe um, obstruct your vision, obstruct your sight picture. Well, that's pretty cool because now when you push that down, it, it, it slides that forward. But to me, that's, that's ingenious. So I do like that. That's, a, that's an offering from Safari Land. That is a 6360 RDS. So I'm guessing the RDS is for red dot sight. Pretty self-explanatory. Again, expensive holsters, but you're buying a gun.
to buy the gun, dude. You're not going to have a good holster for it. What? Get a good holster. Get a good belt. Get good ammo. That's it. You don't need 25 different crappy holsters. Okay. Where, where I kind of had issues is, <laughs> you know, I like guns. I like a lot of guns. I like trying different guns out. I like, I like trying different guns out. I like trying different things out. And I have a voracious appetite to try new things. I'm not rich. I'm not wealthy. I can't have 50 guns. Okay, so I have to buy and sell sometimes. I have to trade sometimes. I have to go down different avenues. I just don't have enough money to have 100, 100 different guns. So I've kind of gone kind of modular like I'm showing you here today. I have different options because I can't afford to buy eight Red River Tactical holsters, um, one with a belt loop, one with a belt clip, one with a molly setup, one with a paddle setup, one with a drop leg setup. I can't do it. So I've kind of overcome that. And Red River Tactical, they have the blade tech pattern here. So I found that they make a great holster that's universal for the blade tech stuff. And they also have their attention with the thumb like I like. Okay, This is actually all blade tech components. So Red River Tactical really got behind the blade tech style, which is great. Because I personally, I do like blade tech a lot. I think they've got a lot of great contributions that they've made to the holster industry. And they make great things. I've never gotten anything from Blade Tech. Uh, maybe Blade Tech will get excited and make a holster for my Chris Kaus to carry comp. That'd be phenomenal, Blade Tech, if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, what haven't we talked about that goes hand in hand with holsters? Your belts. Don't be the guy that gets a good gun and gets a belt like this. Okay, this is crap. It's crap all day. Your belt's gonna sag. Your belt, after like an hour, is gonna start looking like that in one spot. It's gonna start coming together. Okay. This is, I can't remember which company this is. There's so many different companies. Safari Land, Galco, Blade Tech, uh, Blackhawk, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, DeSantis. I mean, just every good holster company that does any kind of leather work is going to have good belt options. This is a inch and a quarter belt, pretty standard, inch and a half, inch and a quarter belt, pretty standard. But this one has a steel track in it. So it's actually very, very rigid. And yes, yeah, side to side's okay, but it, once you actually have the holster on, right here is where you can see they obviously don't have the steel in it anymore. All the way up to the belt here, they have the steel. So this holster is very, very, very rigid when you get it on your person. It, or excuse me, this belt. When you have your holster on, it doesn't flex very easily. You don't notice it. It's not uncomfortable. I've never once had the belt on and said, man, this is very uncomfortable. Or man, my holster's not moving around. This sucks. Great feeling when you have a secure holster and a secure belt. Great, great, great feeling. Okay. Now, kind of blown through holsters, kind of giving you guys an example for some of you that hopefully don't know what's out there. What to pay attention to with holsters, what not to do with holsters. Okay. Here's the most basic advice I can give you to close this video out. Okay. One, look up Red River Tactical because they honestly make legit badass holsters. Two, look up Blade Tech because they make legit badass stuff for holsters, okay? The TMMS, I'm not joking, has saved me hundreds of dollars on holsters. Has saved me hundreds of dollars, saved me so much time, and I can literally change, like I'm changing my shirt, my holster setups, which is really, really cool. What can I tell you guys to give you some advice on holsters? Get a gun that you want. Don't settle for a gun. If you want a Sig Sauer P226 with a rail, Okay, and you're like, ah, uh, I really don't know if I want one with the light, without the light. That's where you start getting into trouble, okay? If you know you want a P226, you want to have a surefire light on it, and you want to have, obviously, the rail if you're doing that. Don't get the other one. Or don't get a holster if you're buying that gun and you don't have the surefire X300 yet. Don't get a holster without that light on it. Because now you're going to basically have a gun that you keep your light on when you get your light. You're going to be so excited about it. You're going to keep that light on there because there's nothing wrong with having a weapon light. Love it. Love it. Want, would love to have a weapon light on every light I own. Now you're going to have a holster that you're basically useless now. Because you bought a holster, you got overexcited, you couldn't wait, or you didn't have that weapon light yet, and you bought a holster that fits it without the weapon light. If you know that you're going to run that weapon light and you don't take your lights on and off your gun, buy the first time, it might be more money, buy a good quality holster, 
that has the weapon retention, has the weapon light, okay? For those of you that don't know, there are some of you that might not actually know this. Weapon retention, okay, these screws on this right here are adjustable. You can make it hold the gun tighter or make it not hold the gun as tight just by adjusting those screws, okay? T-Rex arms, look up T-Rex arms for inside the waistband stuff, okay? T-Rex arms, you've got your adjustable holster here. You can do a little bit tighter, a little bit looser with this screw, this set screw, okay? LAS, um, can't remember what that's an acronym for, it's killing me. Little bit less modification, or excuse me, a little bit less adjustment, as you can see here, on the magazine tension, but I'm okay with that, okay? You've got your adjustment here, you've got your adjustment here on the T-Rex on the arms. Same thing with these, these Blade Tech magazine holsters. You've got an adjustment here for retention. Retention is simply the clamping force that that holster has. The gun will pull out easier, or the gun will pull out a lot less easy because there's a lot more retention on it, okay? Do your research. Look up holster companies. Go on forums. Respond to this video. If you have any questions about a holster, no matter how trivial or dumb or whatever you think it is, comment on this video. Hey, what do I do? I've got this. What do you recommend? I've got that. What do I recommend? I've got 30 bucks. Is there a good holster out there for 30 bucks? I will go ahead and take my time up and help you find it just so you guys get a good holster for your firearm. Get yourself the right holster the first time. Get yourself a holster that you are comfortable with. That is the biggest pet peeve grievance I have with people that buy certain holsters. Oh, I don't want to open and carry my firearm because open carry is stupid. You're right. Kind of. But, but you're right. Open carry is stupid at times. Do I want to draw attention to myself? No. Do I want people to know I have a gun on me? No. Do I want bad guys to know where they can get a gun? No. Do I want bad guys to know who they got to watch out for if something jumps off or they try and do something stupid? No. Do I want everybody to get alarmed or, or walk on eggshells or get the cops called on me and blah, 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 blah? No. But if that's how you're comfortable and that's how you are actually going to carry your firearm, dude, do it. Do it, do it. Because there are a lot of people like myself. I used to love, 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 love appendix carrying firearms. I don't know if it's the beard. I don't know if it's that I don't have my beard anymore. I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. I, I, I'm a fan of it, principally speaking. I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I just don't do it. So something up here, something here is just not comfortable with it right now or not happy with it. I still pennies carry this guy. But I used to carry like 1911s. I used to carry Glock 17s with threaded barrels and comps, RMRs. Um, I used to carry all kinds of cool stuff right here. And it was like, poof, you know, but just not doing it lately. And I don't know if it's because I'm, I'm kind of spoiled because I've got my DB9, uh, the Gen 4 that I like. Used to carry the Green Monster on the clip. Now I've got this one in the Black Rhino Concealment, which is awesome, okay? Um, love it. Super easy, always on my person, there to defend, okay? Great. Very, very happy. Reason I'm using it and wearing it every day, it's comfortable. It's small compact it's concealed okay I wear a firearm pretty much 24 hours a day in my professional life and outside I'm pretty much if I'm taking a dump I have a firearm on me okay so that being said take my advice for what it's worth I'm pretty much wearing a holster 20 hours a day 18 hours a day 16 hours a day every single day I have a lot of experience with holsters have a lot of experience shooting on ranges with holsters. A lot of experience carrying holsters in vehicles. A lot of experience carrying holsters around a lot of people. A lot of experience carrying holsters around hostile people. Get something comfortable. Get something with retention. Get something if you're going to conceal it that does conceal it. There's no point in having a holster to conceal the weapon. Um, you may have to change your clothing style. You may have to change your lifestyle a little bit. But carrying a firearm is a lifestyle change. It is a lifestyle difference. It's no different than if you're a basketball player. You'll never see like a really badass basketball player show up at the court in a pair of penny loafers with khakis on and a nice button-up shirt with cufflinks and this and that. No, dude, you're going to see a dude in ball-out shoes 
ball out gear, they're going to have N1, they're going to have Nike, they're going to have Reebok, they're going to have whatever gear is popular now because I have ball in years. You're going to have them in that gear. It's a lifestyle change. You might have to wear a zip-up shirt. You might have to wear a zip-up jacket. You might have to wear a hoodie. You might have to change some things for what you're wearing. But there are great holster options. So what you buy firearms-wise and what you buy holster-wise as a platform may have to change for you to carry it every day. Be smart. Ask questions. Spend money the first time. Okay? I hope this video helps you guys out. If you guys do have any questions, again, I can't stress it enough. Ask me questions. I love answering questions. As long as you're not a douche. I love answering questions. I'll give you any advice I can give you. I'll share freely. That's, that's kind of what this is about. I hated when I was first getting into firearms and people made me feel stupid. You know, I hate that. I hate that for anything. If somebody asks me a question, they legitimately ask me a question, they're paying me a compliment. They're saying, hey, I can see that you know what you're talking about. Or, hey, I value your opinion. Or, you seem like you know a little bit better than I do. That's a very vulnerable time for somebody. So anybody that makes you feel stupid when they ask you a question, um, that, that guy's a dick, okay? That's not me. If you guys ask me a question, it's a legitimate question, and you're not just trolling, I will literally stop what I'm doing and stop traffic if I have to to answer you guys because I know that that's awesome. That's, that's a compliment you're paying me by asking me a question. So I really do appreciate that, guys. All joking aside. That being said, share, like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Go ahead and do what you got to do. I appreciate you guys. Good luck. Be safe.